Hi, hello. This is the first laboratory for digital storytelling. Today we are going to get uh, a little more into these play and narrative concepts. But let me ask you first, how are you going to do uh, your assignment for this module? I think uh, this is a question that you might have. Everybody usually has it when you are a student. The best answer is always look into the canvas. Go to canvas, read carefully the assignment requirements, try to understand what it is required and ask the lecturer, in this case me, if you have any question. As you have seen in the first lecture, uh, we are in the world of narrative games. Then later, when defining the concepts and the genres, we are going to talk about another term, which is adventure games. Doesn't really matter. We will go uh, through that distinction. But uh, let me make you a reflection uh, right now. Narrative could be uh, part of the game experience in many different ways. Think, for example, in this Stains uh, Gate 2016, if you haven't played it, it's a great game. It has all this uh, element of uh, a visual novel, Japanese style, and also arcade uh, role-playing game. It's very, very cool. Uh, Simulacra, in 2017, uh, was a game uh, using the interface of your mobile and simulating that you are uh, exploring the mobile of someone else. And there is a mystery here and there is a narrative as well. I mean, sometimes narratives don't adopt the way or the classic form of uh, storytelling. And the thing, uh, the talent in this module is how to transform something like very storytelling like, for example, uh, our fairy tales, and uh, transform that into something more like a game, like an experience. So that is the challenge. So there are many different genres that you could use uh, if you want to use uh, a canonical approach, if you want. Uh, like, I'm going to do a conversion, conversational adventure or a visual novel or anything like that. That's an, op an option. Another option is to include elements of dialogue or narrative in your adventure game, which is another possibility. Or going to a puzzle game with some elements of narrative uh, inside. So uh, what are the options? Well, there are thousands of possibilities and uh, it's up to you. And this is kind of one of the complexities of this module. Okay. In order to help you with this, I'm uh, usually uh, establishing some requirements. These conditions are the following. They are uh, explained already in the assignment uh, in the description, and we can come back to them uh, as uh, many times as you need. Uh, so uh, basically, I'm going to explain them implies uh, your game needs to establish choice. When you come to a game, there is a moment that uh, you're going to go to a way or go to another. It's not pure exploration. We are talking about uh, a possibility, uh, like entering in the room and getting an object, okay, or not getting the object, like choosing a route for the game, uh, a route in your map, or choosing another. Like, for example, uh, when you uh, uh, work with uh, one character or you work with another character, okay? There are choices, okay? Uh, these choices usually uh, in games are associated to variables. You don't, uh, you wouldn't need maybe to create variables to create choices. There are many games that are purely navigation, like, for example, uh, 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 interactive novels, okay? But that is, that is not what we want in this module. We want you to understand the concept of variables, okay? We'll talk about variables in another module, in another lesson of, of this, uh, uh, of this uh, uh, module. So uh, you shouldn't worry so much about this. 
uh, you will understand exactly what it entails uh, later. But if you think about variables as values, uh, whatever they are, Boolean variables, like, for example, having a key or not having a key, or we are talking about more complex values that are like, for example, stamina or jump uh, power or things like that. The important thing here is that you have to justify that the use of variables implies uh, alt, um, implies uh, transformations into the narrative. It's not only to use variables, but to create different narrative itineraries depending on the use of those variables. The third condition implies the use of animations. This would be the most uh, simple uh, element to, to, to make in your game, to be the easiest uh, of these uh, requirements. What is important is uh, through your whole experience, you are able to convey the mechanics of the game when you present your uh, files and your YouTube uh, video and that uh, it is clear that there is a story and you can understand that there is a story through the play of the game. It wouldn't be uh, advisable to do a pure navigation experience where someone or a character or avatar is on a labyrinth. I mean, that would be understood that what someone is on a labyrinth. It's not about this. It's about creating a, a, a story, okay? and referring uh, to uh, other stories or creating your own story. Remember that the assignment conditions uh, implies the adaptation of a fairy tale, but nobody tells you how you have to adaptate, adapt this uh, uh, fairy tale. You can uh, take any approach you want. We have some examples from previous years and uh, you can, um, I would suggest you to have a look uh, at the digital media uh, YouTube channel. We are going to talk about this um, on our lessons, probably on the seminar, but uh, it is better that you have a look before so we can have a look together. You will uh, find them uh, using multi-platform storytelling or MPS uh, as terms. What you will find uh, are uh, different uh, videos representing experiences, usually in the form of visual novels, although there are some exceptions, like, for example, this adventure game uh, uh, by one of our students. The uh, premise uh, previous years was the adaptation of a movie in the form of a fan fiction. Okay. So that is why they have uh, different um, uh, approaches. So dialogues are not mandatory. It's just a coincidence that there has been so many uh, visual novels because they understood it was uh, the easiest approach, approach. You can adopt any approach you want, but you need to satisfy the conditions, the requirements. Well, how can uh, you work on your uh, narrative-driven games? Well, you can use, for example, the dialogue systems uh, in Unreal. Um, so they are not included. You have to construct them. You have to design them. Sometimes you can adapt uh, these dialogues from other people. That's fine. You can just reference this work. I'm not that interested in you expending time on designing a, a, or programming or whatever a, a dialogue system. What I want you is to explore the different tools of the engine to create the experience on that. So it's up to you, but you have to reference the work that is in yours, of course. So uh, Unreal is a possibility. You know the pros and the contrasts of uh, using Unreal. It's a, complex but very professional environment and uh, that's one of the possibilities. Another possibility we used last year uh, with some success is uh, Unity uh, with Fungus. Fungus uh, refers only to this uh, uh, engine uh, that works inside Unity. So you can do your experience in Unity, whatever it is, a 2D or 3D game or anything else, any kind of experience. 
and then add uh, elements of system dialog system or clickable environments within uh, Fungus. Okay, uh, this is free and you can install that, uh, just downloading the package. So it should be uh, no problem in installing them on the labs. Okay, so uh, that's another possibility. Uh, it's up to you. I'm going to offer support for uh, Unity and Unreal. I'm going to offer tutorials for these. But uh, if you want to uh, use any of the engine, uh, that is something we should comment together. Uh, you have to comment with me, with the lecturer. And, uh, and maybe I can offer some support or some ideas. But it's uh, on your, uh, you know, it's your decision. It's up to you. So one of the possibilities, Twine. Uh, some people have uh, worked with Twine in the past or uh, Adventure Game Studio. When you are interested in a particular kind of game, like, for example, graphic adventures or, um, you know, puzzles or whatever, you have uh, game engines that are specifically designed for them. But again, you need to be sure that you uh, satisfy the conditions that I suggested before. Rempy uh, works on role-playing games, so you have uh, support for dialogues, but also a uh, combat system and things like that. That's another possibility. Your exercise. Uh, first exercise will be to um, fill this quiz where you inform me what, uh, which is the game engine you're going to use. And uh, I can also check that you have a minimum knowledge of the uh, of this tool, okay? I think uh, you cannot do this uh, quiz just straight away. You need to explore before, uh, or you might need to do the quiz several times. Second exercise will consist on uh, refreshing your knowledge of uh, Unreal or Unity, depending on your uh, previous experience. And uh, you can do that following the exercise on PowerPoint and the YouTube links I provided. Uh, I'm going to provide more materials on Unity and Unreal in each uh, lesson. Uh, feel free to let me know your understanding of these materials and how can we uh, provide extra resources. The important thing here is that in each laboratory you understand what it is uh, needed. So for example, in Unreal Basics, uh, I suggested to refresh exercise uh, related to textures, visual scripting, and, and others. You can follow the exercise I provide in PowerPoint as commented. In Fungus, I would suggest to start first with an overview, uh, going to the documentation of the uh, Fungus, which is all in YouTube videos. And then uh, I will provide as well links to uh, uh, advanced course in uh, Fungus. But first, have a look to that to see if that uh, will satisfy your requirements for your concept for your game. And that's all uh, for today. All these exercises are supposed to be two hours or more. Don't hesitate to spend as much time as you need with this laboratory. And let me know if you have any problem. I'll be around. Okay, take care.